This is what I want. This yeah. One. yeah, yeah. Whoa. All right. Today we're gonna go to the uh, Asia Africa theme park, and uh, we're gonna take some uh, public transportation because you know it's just too easy to call a goja. You know that's the easy way out. So this is only ten thousand, which is like I don't know seventy cents. Should only take about thirty-eight minutes. Let's do it. Oh, and the direction we're heading is north. We're going up to Limbaugh. A lot of people have been saying I had to go check it out. And, uh, well, that's where we're heading. Hopefully it's a lot cooler than here. I don't know how well you can see, but <laughs> that little shop over there looks like they're just selling the soles of the shoes. Just the bottoms. What's that all about? What up, huh? Back to me, boy, yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. It's okay. All right. I think I need to transfer, is what he was saying. I thought I was just on one bus the whole way. But that's part of the adventure. Let's find our next bus. Taking a snooze. Okay. Oh no, that's okay. I missed it. I thought that would be the bus stop up there where the benches are. They pull right by me. All right, let's figure this out. Linda? Linda? Okay. Uh, great Asia, Africa. Yes? No? Yeah. It's okay? Okay. Let's go. Lay down. Yeah. Teddy Makasi. Oh, this one's nice. Look at that. Nice benches. Got some... Got the sound system in here. Okay. I leveled up. Hello. Hello. Tight squeeze. Tight squeeze. Ah. Where do you come from? America. What? America. Hello. Nice to find uh, Ah, Escola? Yeah. Escola Perky? Yeah. Kimbali? Kimbali. Kimbali. Wow. Say hello. Bye bye. Good night. Okay. Maybe making a pit stop? Off? Okay. Abyss, Abyss. Okay. Uh, I don't think I'm here yet, but. But up, huh? Lima Ribu, okay. Okay, Pak. Yeah, Makasi. What? All right. Uh, I don't think I'm quite where I need to be, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'm at another bus stop, it looks like. Let me jump on the uh, the phone and see where we need to go. All right, it says I'm still 11 minutes away. All right, I'm calling it quits. I'm calling a go jet. I'm tired of this. Tight squeeze, tight squeeze. All right. So I had to cross the street, and we're going to go to this little Indo Mart. And my ride should be here shortly. And it should only take like a minute or two to get up there, but I ain't walking. It's all uphill the whole way. This place might be a a happening place. 
Damn, look at all those buses. Definitely not the only one here today. The Great Asia Africa. The ticket down here? All right. Hello. All right, so I think I've just made it to a, essentially a huge themed amusement park. Equipped with a souvenir shop and restaurants and all kinds of stuff, I'm sure. So let's go for a little stroll. It's nice and cool up here. A lot cooler in Bandung, that's for sure. Let's see where we can go. We can go to Korea, Thailand, India, and Japan is just uh, Japan. So uh, this place is called the Asian Africa. Yes. You would like a picture? Oh, that sounds good. Okay, we can take a picture. Where? Right here? Yeah. Oh, this is a nice spot. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Do me a favor. I love you. Here. <laughs> Subscribe. Ah, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So, uh... Like I was saying, this is called the Asia Africa Theme Park. I'm guessing it's inspired by the Bandun Conference in 1955. The, uh, the first ever peace summit between Asia and Africa after World War II. Five countries organized it, and that was in 1955. I'm not sure when this was built, but let's go for a stroll. Let's go for a stroll. Hello, Hello how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And how are you? I'm good. Where do you come from? I'm from America. In here. All right, right in here. This is the picture spot right here. In here. Oh, in here. Okay, you got. I gotta get in here. Okay. Yes, sir. Been in here two minutes and I've already been asked to take a picture with two different groups. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? So here we got the Korean ex exhibition. Let's go check that out. I've only been to Korea once and that was a, a long time ago. Since I lived in Japan for so long, I'm really excited to see what that looks like. So uh, let's head that way. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Oh, after you. That was pretty awkward. <laughs> that was pretty awkward. Oh, okay. Check this out. And here we have the list of all the presidents in Indonesia. The first one. The founding father, Sukarno, the face of decolonization in the third world countries. Next we have Suharto, who led for 32 years, a young Suharto. Then we have Hababi. Wahi Gustur. This would be Sukarno's daughter, Megawati. who I believe still has a lot of influence here in, uh, in Indonesia. Still pulls a lot of weight, from what I understand. Uh, I don't really know much about many of them besides Sukarno, Suharto, a little bit about Megawati and Jokowi. Joko is the current president right now. Okay, let's continue on. Looks like there's a lot of school groups around here. A lot of field trips going on. Oh, who is this? Hello. Siapa? Namanya siapa? Namanya. Who is this? Sukarno? Okay. Foto, please. Okay. Here? Yes. All right. Hello. 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 Alright. 
Two. Oh, just two. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, you. you're welcome. Yes. Now have a wonderful day. Yes. Thank you. Hello. Hi. My name is Nick. Hi. Not Bule. Nick. Nick. Hi. Nick. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to draw a lot of attention here. I already have. Oh, this is some uh, Korean food. Hello. Tapoki. I don't know what that is. Okay, let's keep going. Looks good though. Look at this. Thailand? I'm not really sure. Ooh, well look at this view. This place is huge. Check that out. Over there, it says Asia, Africa. On the side of that mountain. Just keep on going. Keep on going. This must be the American stand. We have pizza, and hamburgers, and hot dogs. <laughs> I might have to come back for that one. But not hungry yet. Let's go to the Japanese one because see what kind of food they're serving up. Maybe they have some ramen or some takoyaki or yakisoba. Whew. This place is massive. Wow. <laughs> this place is huge. The great costumes of Asia. The collection of Asian costumes. The sultans. So pretty. I love the, I love the colors. Chantique. Uh, yeah. Together? Yeah. Do it? Okay. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. My friend, my bestie. Oh. Where'd my towel go? Okay. Okay. Oh, here they come. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Can I have a picture? <laughs> All right. Do it. Do it. Sama sama. America. America. Yes, yes. I love your outfits today. So colorful. Yes. I love it. I love it. Wow. Look at this. India's Jaipur. Jaipur? Am I saying it wrong? Jaipur. Huh? That's pretty cool. And there it is. We've made it to Japan. The Nihonkan. Ooh, let's see what they have to, to eat. Hokkaido cheese toast. Okay, never had that. Ooh. Maybe we'll get that on the way out, but first let's go through the Tory Gates. You can find this in uh, Kyoto at the famous, what's it called, Fushimi Inari. I've only been there once, so. Long time ago when I first went to Japan. <laughs> 11 years ago. <sighs> ah, welcome to Japan, guys. They're playing the famous song Lemon. Great karaoke song. It feels like you're going back in time here. You know, this isn't exactly what Japan looks like today. I think they're trying to portray kind of the older Japan during the, the Edo period from 1600 to 1868. This is kind of what it might have looked like in some of the villages and some of the towns. The Edo period is really interesting. One of the most fascinating periods in Japan. Essentially, for over two centuries, Japan had cut itself off from the rest of the outside world. Uh, in 1600, there was a civil war that uh, ended, and Tokugawa Ieyasu was the victor. He became the shogun, and he was able to basically... Hey, you remember my name? 
for over 200 years in Japan, you had, for the most part, calm and a peaceful nation. They, in, in that period of time, you had a, a feudal system, right? You had the emperor at the top, followed by the shogun, even though the shogun had all the power. Uh, underneath that, you had the, the samurai. Underneath that, you had the peasants. And under that, underneath that, you had the merchants, right? And it was a strict social order. It's not like you could be born a merchant and then move up the ranks and be uh, a samurai someday. For 260 years, it was like this. And so essentially, you know, you could take somebody in Japan from maybe 1650 and then plop them into society in maybe 1750 or 1850 and they could more or less function in that society. Not much, not much change at all. For Japan, kind of their demise in the end, you know, after centuries of not progressing like the outside world had, um, their military became weaker, the samurais became weaker, and so when America in 1853 came knocking on the door and told them to, okay, it's time to open up the ports, it's time to, you know, play with uh, the rest of the world, well, and if you don't, then well, we're just going to take you over. We're going to, you know, we're going to force you to do this. And so Japan at this position was in no, in no uh, state to defend themselves over 250 years they basically you know cut themselves off from the rest of the world and uh, they needed to make a lot of changes very quickly and this is when the power in Japan changed from the Shogun to back to the Emperor actually earlier I said the Emperor was at the top and underneath that you had the Shogun which he was the one that held all the power after America came, uh, the emperor ended up taking over power again. There was a short war, a short like civil war, where the, you know, the uh, of course the shoguns and the daimyos, uh, the the leaders of all like the dominions and uh, the owners of all the land in Japan. Of course, they didn't want to give up power, complete power to the emperor. But eventually, the emperor won, and then you had what was called the Meiji period the Enlightenment period where that's a whole nother story. That is crazy. They were able to go from an underdeveloped, like, not I want to say backwards country, but and in 40 years have one of the most powerful uh, militaries. Uh, he was able to build, you know, build, build a country from scratch almost. You know, they didn't have an educational system. They didn't have banks. They didn't have a government. And... During this period, they were able to form all that. And so, anyways, that's enough about that. I think I covered quite a bit there. Um, Japan, wow. I miss you. I miss you. Hi. Hello. Hi. Where are you from, Bandung? No, where are you from? Dali ah, okay. Is it a school trip? School, a school uh, group? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take a picture. Okay. We can take a picture, sure. Let's take a picture. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. Yay. 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 Everybody. Subscribe, okay? Oh, okay. Subscribe. Okay. But I've always thought the Edo period would have been the coolest time to go see Japan. When there were all the foreigners were essentially kicked out. Uh, the only foreign country that they uh, did business with was the VOC, actually, the Dutch East Indies Company down in Nagasaki. That was the only port open. And so we talked about that earlier in, a, in another video, how powerful the VOC was. Well, they were the only company that did 
trade with Japan until eventually they were kicked out. But she's making up some takoyaki and okonomiyaki. Huh. Got some onigiri. Onigiri. Kare udon. Gyoza. Okay, okay. Yakisoba, they do have yakisoba. Ada? Okay, yakisoba. Yakisoba. Maomakan. Yakisoba. Yak ada beef, ada chicken. Uh, beef. 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 Uh, no. No, no, no. Yakisoba, satu beef. Ini ya, pake mi. Yakisoba. Uh. Yakisoba, pake mi. Kalau Tevan yaki, pake nasi. Now let's just do the, this one right here. Chicken, eh, beef. Beef, please. Beef. All right, the yakisoba has arrived. Hmm. Let's see how it is. Let's see how it is. Let's see. You got all the vegetables at the bottom. They should be mixed in a little more. Uh, of course, just like in true Indonesian fashion, they give you some sambal. Maybe this is some mayonnaise. Cats interested. Let's try the yakisoba. They sure do give you a lot. It's good. It's not your uh, traditional yakisoba that you find in Japan, though, but. I mean, what do you expect? What do you expect? I don't know, the sauce is just different. Oh. It'll do the trick, though. It'll do the trick. Alright, so we got Cairo on one side, Morocco on the other. Let's go to Morocco. Wow. Wow, okay. This is where I should have been hanging out. By the river. Oh, yeah, this is it right here. Whew. So, I mean, all over this theme park, they have seating for tons of people. So, I mean, it is a Thursday. It's a weekday. It's not too busy, but maybe on the weekends, this place gets really packed. And, uh, you know, all those tables and all those places that I just walked by would be full of people, maybe. Man, this is tough. There's only one way down, one way up. And you got to take the stairs. Like, look at this. This is terrible. She's got to walk all the way up here. Wow. Just like I suspected, basically just a bunch of kids on field trips. Hey! Hello, hello. Whew, that's going to do it for the Asia, Africa theme park here in northern Bandung. I hope you learned something. More importantly, I just hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for taking a stroll with me. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Oh, yeah, that's where it's at. Oh. I can do a, a seven minute massage for 70 cents. Sign me up.